Hello and welcome to Where Were You Wednesday. Originally intended to be Tiny Toons Tuesday. This week, or one and only, Lou plays a Lucinda Williams song. Lou plays Lou on Lafayette Street in Louisiana. Lovely. Baton Rouge. I've never been to Louisiana. You've never been to Louisiana? Hmm. I went to Louisiana when I was like seven years old. We did this mm. crazy, I don't know if it was crazy, felt a little crazy. Um, <laughs> my sister, Abby, was a newborn. Say she must have been a baby. Baby, 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 baby. And we decided to, or my parents, my dad wanted to visit his old Air Force buddy, mm. um, Len Falgu who lives down in the bayou near more near new Orleans from here. And we set out in the family station wagon must've been 1973. And, uh, we drove from Michigan to Louisiana stopping along the way to camp. We camped with three kids, three kids, Young newborn, kids. Newborn, like a six or seven year old me and my five year old sister. And, and uh, it was a very, very memorable trip. You um, can we went all the way down it? to Louisiana. I can remember parts of it. Yeah. Cause there had actually been, I know the Falgoos were really friendly. And uh, the kid that was about my age, he referred to everyone as sir and ma'am which my mm. parents were very impressed by. And then I was impressed mm -hmm. by, I was like, Whoa. <laughs> and also there had been a, there had been a hurricane around that time, maybe a few years before that had swept all of the, this whole neighborhoods away. And all, all that were left were these staircases leading up to these just spaces, blank space. So mm. that, that really creepy. Oh, took me aback when I was as a young child. And then also I found a lizard. I found a lizard. There were lizards. I was super excited about the lizard action. I bet. And we went to visit Bat Baton Rouge. This is so, why am I even fucking trying to say it that way? <laughs> I went to Baton Rouge. We went to Baton Rouge mm -hmm. to visit the, the, the state capitol where uh, a politician from Louisiana named Huey P. Long had been assassinated or mm. shot at or something. And you could still see the bullet holes. So I remember seeing the bullet holes at the Capitol when somebody tried, tried to either took the guy out or tried to take him out. He was a very uh, controversial, almost dictator like figure in Louisiana history. There's mm. still a lot of things that named after him around here, which is interesting. And right now I am on, I'm on, I'm in a hotel right on, right on the Mississippi. I look right out my window. And I can see the Mississippi River. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have a nice view. Yeah, um, it is nice. And boy, the Mississippi's a big river. So Do big. Do big. <laughs> and you, you, you were also, you are also from very close to the Mississippi. So I feel somehow True. by being close to the Mississippi, I feel a little, little closer to you. Mm. you know? But also, I was. I was, I, I'm thinking about Lucinda Williams because she was born in Louisiana, not, not close to here. She's born like kind of, kind of on the other side of the state, closer to the Texas border, Lake Charles. Mm. But um, uh, as you know, and as probably most of the people that listen to the podcast know, because I, I imagine that we have, there's like four or five people that are our friends that I've already told this story to. <laughs> but I uh -huh. met was one of my greatest, greatest meetings with another musician. I met Lucinda Williams not that long ago in Nashville, Tennessee. You and I are and both big fans, big fans. I'm, I'm a fan. I mean, mm -hmm. who the fuck isn't really? I don't know. I don't want Who to know isn't? those people, though. I don't want to know them either. 
<laughs> I don't want to know. <clears throat> um, but uh, so I wanted to I wanted to play a Lucinda Williams song. Ah, and is this Tiny Tunes Tuesday or is it? This is Tiny we, Tunes Tuesday. It's gonna come out today. <laughs> Maybe. Or Wee Wee I Wednesday? Know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you Wednesday? <laughs> poor Adele. Poor Adele. Where you been? Uh, she actually. She acted. Where you been, Lou? She activated <laughs> my find your find your iPhone today. <laughs> So I, I woke up to an alarm <laughs> emanating from my phone. I'm like, I did not set an alarm. And this is this is yesterday was my day off, and today I'm ensconced in this hotel room, and I don't have to go anywhere until like four o'clock in the afternoon. So no alarms were set, but I knew what it was, and I was like, oh no. And poor Adele, um, she thought I had a, sort of a rock star, maybe maybe a rock star moment last night. And drank too much, took too many pills, and maybe passed away at the night. But that that didn't happen. It did not happen. Listen, I feel really bad. You gotta wonder. You gotta wonder when you're at home hey, and uh, look, your person's on the road. You get scared right when I take too long coming home from the grocery store. Yeah, you don't come home from the grocery. You're like ten minutes late going home from the grocery store, and I'm like, where is she? I mean, and my mind goes, it goes, it goes places, and so yeah. Um, I know where you're at. I know how you feel. You've had enough time to recover. Um, I'm a little tender I'm still, still, but I'm, you know. You're, you're tender. <clears throat> I'm st- I'm still pretty, I'm rough. I, I stayed up all night. <laughs> I don't know. I do this occasionally. It's been a while. I stayed up all night watching, like, YouTube videos of my bands. So, so, self, <laughs> so self-indulgent. But, and then again, but then while I'm doing it, I, 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 I believe research. that it's somehow... It's a research. It's like, hey, how much do I suck? Oh, I don't suck as much as I thought. You know, there was some really, there's some pretty good uh, Sebado footage out there from like 1999, and even from one of the last tours we did, there was there's a really excellent. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're talking about real shit here. We're talking about Lou Cinda. Mm-hmm. Yep. Referred to as Lou by those who seem to know and love her. <laughs> So should I should I play should I try to make it make it through make a groggy version of this song that I'm, I'm gonna yeah play this I'd song. love to hear I don't know what you're okay, gonna so, play so it's a surprise yeah. for me I envy the wind that whispers in your ear that howls through the winter that freezes your fingers. That moves through your hair That cracks your lips That chills you to the bone I envy the wind I envy the rain That falls on your face Wets your eyelashes That dampens your skin That touches your tongue That soaks through your shirt and Drips down your back I envy the rain I envy the sun Brightens your summer, that warms your body, that holds you in her heat, that makes your days longer, that makes you hot, that makes you sweat. I envy the sun. I envy the wind I envy the rain I envy the sun I envy the wind Well, that's perfect. 
Yeah, it's the last song, I think, on Essence, which is mm -hmm. one of my favorite listen to records. Um, I love that I had, record, too. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, I'd heard it, I think, uh, you know, when we worked on Dinosaur Jr. records, and back in the day when I would go there, I would go, go from Los Angeles to, to Massachusetts and spend quite a bit of time, you know, um, commuting between my parents' house and Jay's house. And each time we did a record, there was always some record that they were playing a lot, like Jay and Louisa, uh, Louisa being Jay's wife. And there was one, one time where they were, they were doing a lot of listen to, and I had never heard that record. And I was like, whoa. Um, so. Man, <clears throat> I haven't right. heard that in, I, I don't know, to 20 years. I mean, so long. I don't remember when that came out, but it feels like, when did that come out? It was in my... 2001. I, but, I did some say, research. It's been, it's been over 20 years since I've heard that record, I think. I. Oof, she's a fucking poet. Wow. I mean, is that what you she call is. it? A poet? I, is she a poet? She's a. She's her, a her father was a poet. Her wow. father was a poet. But yes. <laughs> I just feel like I could the read that is. as a poem, you know, like too. Like that would be beautiful written. And just reading those no, it's, words it's, too. Yeah, it's great. So, um, can I just say please. something really quick about that song? It's like sure. a wedding song. You know how mm. some, you know, when like a husband and wife they do their dance, their first dance. That's kind of yeah. Sweet. I can't. I can't first dance. Anyway. I can't. I mean, I to me, it's almost like a, a heartbroken song. I mean, it's almost like a. It has. It has. There's a lot of Longing. that record is a very, very uh, melancholy record essence as in a lot of her stuff, of course. But, um, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'd want that played in my wedding. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I think I'm just picturing two people dancing we, and like looking at Adele each other I, I, slowly. <laughs> we are married. We are married, but someday we're going to have a wedding because we got, we got married just the two of us and, Someday, someday we're gonna have a big. Someday we're gonna have a big party. Was I just telling and, uh, you about that? How we yeah, were we talking, just talking about that about again? It. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about it. So let me quickly tell my Lucinda yeah, tell story. Your story. It's gonna be quick because I got to You know, I want to be. I I my first thought when the, when the evening happened, when I did hang out with Lucinda for a night, and when I did see L.A. Guns with Lucinda. <laughs> Which is, um, uh, I thought, you know, I'm just going to keep this story to myself and just tell tell my close friends, you know, tell a few people. Um, but the last time I was telling the story the other day in Louisville, Louisville, with to my friend Donnie, I was like, maybe I should just tell this on the podcast because it's a good story. Mm. So, so the second part of the full complosion tour that we did, we had a week off in the middle, and then it the the tour began again in uh, Nashville and I contacted my friend. He's my friend now, Bobby bear jr. He plays guitar. He plays guitar with guided by voices. I had met him several times. We are exactly the same age. We are like, we are like within a month of each other, 58 years old. Um, and uh, I was like, Hey Bobby, I'm coming through Nashville. He's like, Oh, that's cool. You, you want to stay at my place? And I'm like, sure. I'll, I'll stay at your place. And then, uh, so I get a text maybe a couple of days later. Hey, when you come, do you want to go see LA Guns? Now, LA Guns is like, they're not quite a hair metal band. They're a little bit more of a Guns N' Roses band. In fact, they share DNA with Guns N' Roses. They kind of, you know, began at the same time. So he's like, yeah, let's go see LA Guns. So I'm like, I'm, you know, I get to, I get to Nashville. <laughs> I go to his house and he goes like, uh, do you know, you know, Lucinda Williams? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby. Bear heard of her. I do know. Heard of her. I don't know. And she's some. Um, so um, he's like, well, you know, she gave me a call and she really wants me to take her to this honky tonk, you know, that night to see a friend of hers from Los Angeles. She's doing a show. Her friend's doing a show at this honky tonk. Can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. It's like, so she might be hanging out. I'm like, okay. 
And um, like with us, I have to say, I'm like, I'm like with us because like, I mean, I kind of felt like, wow, he he knows her, of course, because he's kind of like his his dad, Bobby Bear Senior, is a very he's a he's in the Country Music Hall of Fame. This guy's been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, he's he's, he's, kind, of he's cool. kind of from country royalty too. Like he's he's kind of from yeah. country royalty a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, is um so is yeah so i'm like wow okay what what an evening this is shaping up to be so i get to bobby's house <laughs> and he, he he's on the phone with he's on the phone with lucinda at some point it's like okay yep all right all right well i was thinking we could go out to eat too oh good okay all right great i was like okay we're gonna go get lucinda and then we're gonna go out to eat then we're gonna go see la guns and then we're gonna go to the honky tonk and I'm like, <laughs> perfect okay. night in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so we're, we're hanging, we're hanging with Lucinda. And he says, and he starts referring to her as Lou. So I'm like, okay, Lou. So uh, we get into Bobby's car and we drive to this neighborhood in Nashville. It actually, is very close to where a friend of mine used to live. Oh, it's a cool bungalow neighborhood. Um, and uh, we get to her house, we pull up and he's, he kind of gives me a little bit of, you know, kind of prepares me. He's like, you know, Lucinda, um, things can happen. I've had a lot of really fun experiences with her, you know, just, but you know, um, be prepared for anything. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> but that's her, that's, you know, that's her reputation. I've heard it from many people. It's like, she's fun. She's fun, okay. engaged and very uh, entertaining person. And I've heard this before. So I was like, okay. So we, we pull up, we pull up to Lucinda's house and Bobby clears out the back seat. You know, he's got all this, whatever, <laughs> you know, cups and papers in the back seat. So he clears out the back seat. And I'm like, well, we're preparing for this. We go up to the front door of the house. <laughs> we knock on the door and this guy answers and he goes, Hey, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of like, what's going on, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I'm here to pick up Lou. You know, she's she wants me to take her out to this honky tonk to see her friend, and we were maybe going to stop by a show beforehand. And he goes, Okay, well, hold on for a sec. And he goes back, <laughs> and we're still on the porch. And I'm like, Well, this is wild. I'm like sitting on the porch, and the guy. Would, I mean, he it, it, I, he knew Bobby, so it's not that he was sizing us up. He was just kind of like, Hmm, okay. So he goes back and then he comes back to the door and he goes, oh, all right, come on in. So we walk into the house and she's not there. And then there's another guy there, you know, I believe her husband. He's like, Hey, Bobby, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> and kind of gives, gives him the same, kind of gives him the same. I don't, I don't think the guy had a Southern accent. I'm not, I'm not sure, but I'm just going to give everybody a Southern accent in this story. Cause it's her fun. husband, I believe is from Minnesota. Yeah. So, um, so he's kind of like, <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Well, well, hold on for a second. So he goes, he goes to the back of the house and you hear this conversation like, I'm like, okay. (laughs) And I'm kind of sitting on the couch and still, I feel like, I feel like I'm a teenager or like, you know, in my early twenties going to pick up somebody at their mom's. I don't, it's like really interesting vibe. So we start, I'm making small talk with the guy. It turns out the guy who had opened the door initially was like, one of her tour managers you know, who works for her because she tours quite a bit. She's a very, very, very active mm-hmm. um, uh, performer. So uh, then Lucinda comes out. She comes out from the back of the house to the front and she's like, Hey, Bobby. <laughs> he's like, Hey, Lou. And she's like, I'm ready to go. And she had like this big kind of, she had a really cool piece of jewelry around this cool t shirt, you know, and she had some black jeans on. She's ready to go. So. <laughs> So we go out the door and the guy who initially opened the door comes with us, you know, because mm-hmm. I was thinking like, is it just me, <laughs> me, Bobby and Lucinda? Like, holy crap. <laughs> but the guy comes along, you know, the guy comes along. So we all kind of pile into Bobby's car. Lucinda's up front and Bobby has a great rapport with her and she's laughing mm. and he's making her giggle. It's very, very sweet. And she's cool. Totally cool. Um, and we go to a restaurant. And, uh, we happen to get, a, we get, we, we get seated and, you know, so the, and we have dinner with her Oh. and, uh, yeah, we're having dinner with Lucinda and I'm kind of just like, I'm having a really hard time shutting the voice in my head up. Cause I'm just like, I don't, I just can't, but we have this nice, we have this nice dinner with her, you know, 
And then, uh, then it's time to go to LA Guns. <laughs> and <laughs> so we get back into Bobby's car, but the decision at that point is that we are going to go back to Lucinda's house and get into her uh, assistant's car. And then we're going to go over. He's going to drive. Mm-hmm. And then, so we're in the car and, uh, you know, I'm kind of making a little small talk. I'm making a little bit of forays into conversation with her that aren't going great. It, they're not going anywhere, but that's fine. Cause I'm just, you know, I'm, but I do at some point she looks at the sky and she goes like, Oh man, what a beautiful time of night. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was dusk. And mm-hmm. I said, Oh, it's, it's the crepuscular time of night. She goes, what's that word? I've never heard that word before. And I'm, oh, it's just the beautiful word that describes dusk and dawn, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, that's a fancy word. And I said, I'm like, oh, and I, I can't believe I said this. I'm mean, just, I went, yeah, I wrote a song called Crepuscular. Oh. I'm like, why the fuck am I talking? Why did I mention I'm a musician or that I write songs? I mean, what? It's the last thing that somebody on that level wants to hear is like here's my hey, tape. Also you want to hear it? Here's my <laughs> tape. I'm also a songwriter. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know. Um, oh. But it, it goes by. You know, it doesn't. No, no one seems offended. Only, only me. Uh, <laughs> you're offended. You mean you're offended at yourself? By myself. You, you're embarrassed. I was offended. Okay. I was embarrassed that I even okay. mentioned that I was a songwriter. Like, what am I trying to do? Validate myself. I mean, oh. make them ask more, qu- make her ask questions like, oh, really? You're a songwriter? Tell me all about I mean, what am I at? Why? Anyway, I, me- I mellow out. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Mellow out. We get to LA Guns. <laughs> and it's mm-hmm. at this club. And uh, the guy who's kind of running, running the show is this guy, Grimy, who runs this fantastic record store in Nashville. I've met him several times and played the place. And boy, you know, we pull up close. She gets out and Grimy comes out and he's like, Whoa, Lou, you know, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they basically, we walk in the crowds. The, the, uh, it's a pretty full club. LA Guns have yet to go on. Um, they're playing like hard rock classics in the back in the club. So we're kind of led right through the crowd. You know, I'm like, Whoa, and right to a table real close to the stage. Mm-hmm. And she had also, this is pretty funny. Leading up to here in the car right over, she said, <clears throat> well, I've always been interested in that. Like, I mean, I used to, one of my best friends dated like the guitar player, or the singer or something. I'm like, well, she, so she's kind of psyched to see LA guns. Cause she, <laughs> <laughs> so we sit down and then I, I happen to be sitting right next to her at this little round table. And I'm like, okay, make some conversation, Lou with Lou. So I said, <laughs> So I said, hey, you know, what, what's your favorite, like, hard rock band? Who are your favorite? What's your favorite kind of heavy, heavy rock band? And she thinks about it for a second. She goes, hmm, well, I do like Tool. <laughs> I'm like, wow. She, I mean, like, I mean, that, I, I didn't know what she would say necessarily. I thought that maybe was not it, though. <laughs> name check some 70s hard rock band. I, don't, I didn't. No, I just, uh, wow, you know, ACDC even. I had no idea, sure. I just, but, but Tool, but Tool. And then she, I think she even said, like, at that point, like, you know, Nine Inch Nails also are, are good too. I like them, you know. Um, so I found oh. out the Tool was her favorite hard rock man. And, uh, and still, it's like, you know, I don't have, didn't establish a flow with Lou, but that's fine. I'm psyched, you know, and LA guns play and it's, it's pretty funny. And I'm mean the whole time they're playing, I'm Wikipediaing them just to get the whole story. Cause there's mm-hmm. two, there was two original members of LA guns. Cause I'm like, they're two, how old are those guys? They're exactly my age, which is really funny. Mm-hmm. And they have a young band. They had this young band of like rockers that look like they were just teleported as if they were teleported from 1988 or something from the sunset strip and put on stage with Tracy guns and the other guy, the other original <laughs> guy. It's, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. These young guys who are so devoted to their look and to, and to, and to being in yep. LA guns and making it that moment. And if they could be smoking on that stage, they would be, but nobody smokes them. You know, it's, it's, it's a, 
Yeah, neither it's a bad habit. Guided by voices, nor LA guns <laughs> can smoke on stage anymore. Um, so Bobby, meanwhile, he's also sitting. You know, she's kind of—I wouldn't say sandwiched between the two of us, but he's on the other side of her and making her laugh. And so we watch four or five songs, and then it's time to go to the honky tonk. Mm-hmm. So we get let out the back door, the secret back door, and uh, fun. Um, our driver, our driver at that point, her assistant is—he pulls his—he's driving one of those muscle cars, one of those new ones, those. I don't know, Challenger or, you know, new Mustangs that are super like. (laughs) So we get into that car and we drive to the honky tonk and um, we we get to the honky tonk pole right up, you know, so she can kind of get out and, and uh, Bobby's like, he's like holding her arm and leading her. She's, he's like holding her hand and leading her places. Like it was so sweet, you know? And uh, uh, so, yeah, he holds her hand or she's holding on to his arm, you know, leads her up the stairs to the to the club. We walk into the club and women, these women surround her. All these women kind of dressed kind of like Stevie Nicks, you know, Mm -hmm. and at this point, Lucinda had actually she had been psyched because we'd had dinner and no one had said anything to her, you know, and. I mean, she so was like, because able I think to kind of like at that, dine in privacy, right? Yeah. She was actually, we, we'd had a pretty cool night of her being kind of anonymous, you know, Yeah. even at LA, even at LA guns. Cause I think I don't, I, I'm going to assume. And from what I've seen from my experience being in proximity of people that are very famous, it can be intense for them mm-hmm. and it can mm-hmm. be because people are compelled towards them and can really it can be a little suffocating for them, I imagine. But when we got into that club, the women who came up to her were like, really, like, they were like her friends or something. I mean, she seemed pleased. Like she was, she was just all of a sudden surrounded by this. I mean, you could just feel the love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That these women were just like, and they were just chatting away, and they led her, they led her up to a, a table right near the stage and uh she sat and she watched her friend play and uh then bobby and i tried to get back to his car because <laughs> and that's what we did and bobby then like we were we went out to a patio while the show was going on and he was just telling me kind of the history of this honky tonk and how close it is it's very close to this guy um who's long since passed away but john hartford who was a very famous Nashville songwriter. He wrote gentle on my mind among other things, mm. which I was very impressed by. Cause I'm like, I can't I look, gentle on my mind is one of my favorite songs. Yeah. And so Bobby was kind of giving me a little bit of his, he, he always drops some cool knowledge about, you know, his, his growing up in, in Nashville. Like he, I think he lived next door to Tammy and George and Tammy at one point on a lake. That's wild. Yeah. Anyway. So we left Lucinda there cause her, her dude was there with his car and, and, uh, and, uh, Bobby and I Ubered it back (laughs) to uh, Mm -hmm. his house. And that was my night with Lucinda in proximity to Lucinda. Mm -hmm. And then went back to Nashville, you know, a couple, not that long ago. Um, and, uh, he was like, yeah, man, Lucinda called me up the other night and wanted to go out to eat with us. It's like, I think she thinks you're my roommate. But she <laughs> so she asked if, if, oh. if Bobby and I wanted to go out to eat. <gasps> Honey. So she remembered That's amazing. me. Amazing. So you imprinted on her. So you're not just, you know. Maybe she, in you, some she, way. It's okay then. Maybe so in some it way. wasn't maybe she was just sussing you up and she decided you were okay. It was like maybe she needs a little time to, you know. Yeah. <gasps> Sure. Wow. <laughs> so I don't think she disliked me. I'll put it that way. Doesn't it sound like funny. she disliked she, you at all. If she's willing to go out to dinner with you again, I know. I don't know. This is I mean, could be wrong. I mean, but, um, this is what Bobby said. Exciting. Bobby Bear Junior told me. So wow. I don't know, but uh, but it was I really think cool. That means and you're she in was, with Lou. She told she told some pretty funny stories. She told stories about recording her records. She Aww. told a story about dancing with a woman at a club and <laughs> just she just said it was just funny she was just real 
just add the and and Bobby, of course, was just was pulling these wonderful stories out of her. It was very nice. So that that's that's it. Wow. Would you say that? I don't think of you as being like very. You don't typically get nervous meeting people. I also don't really get too nervous meeting people. Only occasionally there's certain people that kind of like tweak me and I'm like, ooh, I get excited about like being near them in proximity. Like Bob Mould makes me Mm -hmm. feel like really crazy and stimulated when I get to be near him. (laughs) Yeah, and that's the crazy, like you're like, you know, I'm like, oh my God, it's Bob Mould and I just love him so much. (laughs) He's in my living room, okay. (laughs) You know, I'm like, you've got to be cool. Anyway, um, He's like one of those people, but you know, I, I feel like fortunate that I just, I, I just feel like, yeah, people are people and they're, this is just their job. And so for the most part, I, I don't really get too worked up and, and that's a nice thing. Actually, it's nice to not get too stressed about it, but I, I do think that I would feel, I think I might feel a little bit of that nerves around her too. And did you mm. feel that too? Because you don't typically feel that way either, but I, I kind I of did. feel like you I, I, did. I yeah. I, I did, but I, I did a lot of, I sort of, I've summoned a lot of my recent coping mechanisms, which was like deep breaths. Mm-hmm. And then also just like, you don't have to say anything right now. Mm-hmm. You do not have to mm-hmm. insert yourself in the conversation. Just, Observe what's happening. Enjoy, enjoy Bobby Bear Jr. and Lucinda Williams talking to each other. Enjoy the tenderness that it seems to exist that's between them as friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you know, be, and this is cool. I was like, this is cool. Right. I am going to see LA Guns with Lucinda Williams. I know. And now I've told That's... the world. I was gonna. I was gonna see how long I could hold on to this. But the the thing is, <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to say. It, I wanted to do the story publicly before. And this always happens with me, as I start to embellish the story as as I go along. Classic, so like, Barlow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Classic. You know. <laughs> I, I start exaggerating. <laughs> You know, so oh, let's try to keep God it knows. as my fairly version, close to my, the truth as possible. All right, now you may play over me, and I will speak. Uh, I will cease to talk. Thank you for listening to Tiny Tunes Tuesday. Where were you when <laughs> <went ago? laughs> part of the Ron Breshens podcast? This was not a very tiny Tunes Tuesday. Where so were super long. Wednesday. <laughs> we're tipping 38. It's good for me to know how long these stories are, too, because I'm like, I'll tell these stories. And then I'm like, I, you know, like my friend Donnie the other night, I was probably I probably told him that it probably took me an hour to tell the story. It's like, dear God, I got a <laughs> dear Lord. <laughs> You're becoming a bore, uh, Lou. You're, you're getting oh boring. God. Oh, well. Oh. So now you got a podcast. You can just tell everyone. Yeah. Here you go. Raw impressions. Where were you Wednesday?